<laughs> Thank you. Uh, for materials, uh, you can use pen, ink, pencil, iPads, tablets, whatever your form of working is. I don't want to discourage that. So comics can be made using anything. So anything you feel comfortable with, feel free to break that out. And yeah, welcome to exploring ideas for comics. Uh, I think it's one of the parts of comics that's not uh, emphasized enough is actually exploring ideas opposed to having a finished idea ready because this is how you get to a finished idea and you won't know unless you explore. Um, I am Lawrence Lindell, that's me with my little bisexual hat because I am bisexual and black. Uh, <laughs> uh, these pictures sum up me, it's me digging for comics uh, in an antique shop in the Bay Area a couple of exhibitions I've been in featuring my zines and comics, and then a few lectures I do uh, revolving around mental health and comics. Um, I do a lot of mental health stuff because I live with bipolar and PTSD. And I've kind of become known for that, but I, I make comics about everything. So I'm trying to like emphasize that I'm just a general, I make comics about everything. Uh, I put out a memoir last year called From Truth With Truth. And it was nominated for a Believer Book Award and the Dwayne McDuffie Award for Diversity in Comics, which is pretty cool, uh, self-published. And it was part of a failed Kickstarter, but I still was able to put it out. So I'm happy about that. Uh, I do some stuff for The New Yorker, particularly The New Yorker Daily Shouts. I think I have seven up right now. I'm hoping to have some more, but uh, thanks to Emily and Colin for this, because they give me kind of like a a different avenue to express like what I want to make in comics. Uh, I have a middle grade graphic novel coming out in 2024 called Buckle Up and it's with RH Graphic. Um, I'm excited about that. I don't know if I can really say more about it, but that's coming. Uh, this is sort of some of the process of how I make books. And I have another graphic novel that I'm working on, but I can't talk about until next week, but it features the characters from my webcomic called The Section that I put out in 2018. And it's about queer black people and weird black people and black people. Um, <laughs> I run a small press with my spouse, Brina Nunez called Linnea House, and we do print comics and digital comics. That's enough about me. Um, running out of things to talk about, so let's get into the workshop. Uh, before we begin, know that there are a bunch of ways to make, ways to create comics, experiment and explore. Um, anything I teach or workshops I do, I try to like really encourage, just put something on the page. It doesn't need to be perfect. It doesn't need to be drawn well or whatever you consider drawn well. Just get it on the page and then go from there. And so, Allow yourself three minutes to write, draw, doodle, type, or think of some ideas for your comic. No idea is too big nor small. Um, I picked three minutes because you can spend hours trying to come up with ideas. But if you have a timeline, I notice like your mind kind of goes, all right, well, I only have three minutes. Let me see what I got. So I'm going to set a timer and let you get to it. So you have three minutes starting now. And yeah, so uh, I'll kind of talk so that there's not silence. I have music, but I wasn't sure if like copyright stuff would be a problem if they end up reposting this on YouTube and stuff, because I know that's kind of tricky now. Uh, so I'm going to ramble while you think of ideas. <laughs> um, when thinking of ideas, don't try to have like a concrete finished story. Just put anything you think you want to make into a comic on the page or in your mind. Some people don't like writing things down and they'd rather just keep it in their mind. That's fine too. I often write notes on my iPad or my phone in the little note section for ideas I have and come back to it later. Um, and doodles are good too, because yeah, doodles are the best. Wow, see we have people in here from Cleveland, New York, Toronto, Canada, Nova Scotia, 
Seattle, Massachusetts, Hawaii, Mumbai, India, Boston. And you have about a minute and 24 seconds. Oklahoma, Austin. <laughs> and a little under a minute. El Paso, Maine, wow. Yeah, I'm in San Francisco. I guess I should have said that in the beginning, but I don't think it matters. <laughs> and we're coming to the last 10 seconds. So get your last ideas out, if you will. And so now we want to allow yourself two more minutes to choose one of your favorite ideas to explore. Uh, save the other ideas for another time. I purposely picked two minutes because sometimes I can spend hours trying to find the right idea and spend all my time thinking about the idea instead of picking one. So I'm going to set a timer for two minutes and just pick the one you like the best or the one you like the least that you think will be most challenging if you're into that. Sometimes I like to pick comics I don't want to work on just to kind of flex and develop my skills as a cartoonist. <laughs> I'm laughing because I'm reading the comments. <laughs> And we have a little under a minute. Rose says, how do I explore? Um, I doodle a lot. Um, and one word, I'm, I'm like a one word person for my ideas. So like comic about mania. And then that turns into a whole entire <laughs> comic book because yeah, that's kind of how I explore the ideas. And All right, so now that you have an idea to explore, let's talk techniques and panel options. Um, this is not gonna be like a intensive on comics theory and things like that, but I just picked a few things that I think um, I wanna talk about, which is techniques, uh, speech balloons. I think the standard we know is the circle, but I like to explore different shapes because you can do different things in comics. And I think, um, I think working with students, especially in college, there's kind of a standard that's been around for so long that they think that's what comics is, where the whole form of comics is so vast that I don't want them to miss out on exploring 
things that haven't been done or things that have been done that have been pushed to the side. And so this is a quick example of four different things you can do with speech and dialogue in comics. It's not special, but it's fun to me. Um, same thing with thought bubbles. I think number three is my favorite one to explore because you can kind of explore thought in a different way than number one. I use number one a lot, but I'm starting to lean towards number three a little bit more because you can play with the words and the letters and the text within. Yeah. And so my idea was crying on a day that's beautiful. And so here's an example of a one panel comic. Uh, two days, a good day to cry. Um, two panels, today's a good day to cry. Second panel, zoom in on the character crying while smiling. Four panels, because I don't do a lot of three panel comics, um, kind of slow the zoom down a bit and then in with the extreme zoom in of the crying. And six panels, which I want to challenge everyone to keep your comics to six panels today, just for time sakes. Uh, start off with the butterfly, have the butterfly enter into the second panel, character sees it, today's a good day to cry, smile, cry, zoom in on the crying. And now that we got some info, let's draw, let's get drawing. Uh, we will have about 20 minutes to draw, keep it loose and have fun. You're not making perfect comic. You just want to get your idea out on the page so you can develop it later. And I'll start the timer and I'm going to shut off my camera for a bit so I can move it so that I can also draw while y'all are drawing. I think, I think y'all could see that. So the music I'm playing is music that we made in the house so we don't have to worry about copyrights. So I, that was my solution to the silence. Um, let's see. So we're gonna start with the butterfly for me.
Yeah, when I'm sketching, I just keep it really loose. Um, some of the comics I pitch look just like how they look on the screen, where it's just kind of like get the general idea down. And then I try to go back and develop it later. Um, because it's not about the comic being perfect the first time around. It's just getting the idea on the page. Because um, I used to have a habit when I was younger to try and draw the perfect drawing the first time around. And then if I wanted to change something, I'm stuck with this perfect drawing that I'm no longer going to use instead of exploring all my options before I decided to finalize it. Lawrence, some people are wondering what you're using. Um, it's just Photoshop on the iPad. Um, I know most people that I know that make comics on like the iPad, like Procreate. But when I first got this in 2017, this is what I started with. And I'm not a big, like, if it's what I start with, it's just kind of what I'm used to. So I got used to using Photoshop on um, the iPad. Um, most of my comics are drawn. Traditionally, I'm not opposed to digital comics. Uh, my undergrad degree is in animation, 2D animation, so we always drew digitally, but uh, lately I've been drawing digitally a lot. Also, I don't have reference for a butterfly, so this is gonna have to do for right now. And we have about 11 more minutes.
in about seven minutes. Uh, for Nikki, I would I would try to keep it to six panels. Uh, but if you feel like you want to do more, I'm not gonna stand in your way from doing more. <laughs> uh, but the thing I I like about um limiting the panels is it it forces you to see what you can do with limited space, and then when you want to expand upon the six panels, you kind of um. Well, for me personally, it keeps me from going overboard or packing in too much. And it cuts down on editing too, yeah. And there's a little over two minutes, maybe two minutes and 20 seconds.
And we have about one minute left um, in the chat saying if anyone wants to share, which is coming up after this one minute, you can raise your hand, the Zoom hand. Last 30 seconds. That is our 20 minutes. Uh, now that we got, wait, oh, here we go. I skipped ahead. All right, now who's ready to share? Don't be shy, embrace your work. As always, if need be, I can go first. Um, but if you're ready, I would rather see y'all's comics instead of mine. Can we see Jennifer or, oh, there we go. Thanks, Lawrence. All right, thanks. Can you, okay. Um, so I've got, I've got a couple characters that I've been trying to um, practice having conversations together. So I did my comic about them. So this will be my first harvest festival. What's it like? Oh, it's my favorite festival of it all. So much good food. The air is crisp. Everything smells delicious. Sniff. That's it. Thanks for sharing. Thanks. Hello? Hey, I'm Barry. I'm currently in Los Angeles. Um, so this uh, idea is based on uh, telephone conversations with my mom, um, just the things that she relays to me. So uh, it just started off, she was telling me a story about someone stole her peanut butter cups. And she said, where's my cups? Oh, damn, who stole my Justin's cups? And she slams the refrigerator shut. And I'm talking with her on the telephone. And she says, ah, surely I remember not eating it. And I'm going, hmm. And then one month later, um, I found something hidden in the fridge door. You mean the peanut butter cups? That's it. Thanks, Barry. <laughs> okay. I'm new here, so I didn't really know what to do, but I um so I didn't do like a whole story. I just started drawing this dinosaur with the saw logo and I did that because I feel like I'm an old dinosaur I turned 60 on Monday and so I wanted to just kind of combine the two of finding this place and just drawing I love drawing dinosaurs too so that's it here's some rest of the stuff this isn't related to this 
So I'm going to learn how to draw stories from this group, I'm sure. Yeah, I can't wait to see that dinosaur turn into like, I wonder what adventures it'll get into. And that was kind yeah. of the theme of today's workshop is just exploring ideas. So you already have one ready to go. And can't wait to see it more, develop more. I'll do that, yeah. So I'm coming to you from the loft of my tiny house that I just moved into that I built while undergoing some personal bad stuff. The house that I built, the house that built me. The Torx head screw looks like this from the top. So the bit doesn't slip and ruin the screw because then the screw head would look like this. And then your stuff would fall apart and your house would fall down. When something screws with your head, it looks like this, but you can still fall apart, which is all in pieces or down. Thank you for sharing, especially, yeah, personal comics are hard to share. I always feel like they're hard to share, so, and they're hard to work on, so thank you for doing that. Hi, everyone. Um, my mom told me this wild story today about her life that I've never heard before, so this is just about that, so. Today, I learned that my mom, who's only 51, came to America on a steamboat. They packed all their stuff in steamer trunks, which my mom was mesmerized by. Her parents sent messages by telegram. I thought steam travel went out in the 50s before my mom was born. I look at old photos of my mom in black and white. She's looked the same forever. I want, is she really only 51? Sometimes I don't know. Awesome. <laughs> That's how I feel about my aunt. It's like, how, how old are you? Yeah. Hi there. I'm usually in Massachusetts, but today we traveled to Philadelphia for a conference and I made it to the <laughs> online thing. So we went to the Philadelphia Museum of Art um, and it's uh, I mean, the, the, the text I'm working on yet, but it's Philadelphia Museum of Art, famous legacy in art history. Uh, the 72 stone steps Rocky made famous in his eponymous um, movie. Um, it houses a temple of, uh, of attainment and happiness on its third floor. And inside it's, um, I was looking at the structure of it. Um, it's built on these fake rocks. They would be real rocks in, in the, in the wild, I guess, um, but they're made of cement, but they still built the structure the same way. They, they carved the um, wood to fit the rock uh, and then used these metal pins essentially for the um, mortise and tenon. Um, but the conclusion I came out with was that it's um, a temple, um, sorry, I got to read it. Um, Art is temporal and subjective grounded on um, fake support temple that no one can enter or worship at so where it's real and that's kind of um, I was going to work on the text at the last bit and that's it hi everyone I'm Preetha and um, I'm in Brooklyn and um I, uh, it's backwards, <laughs> um, but I tried to draw something about denial. And um, so the text reads, as I was saying, that didn't happen. 
And I tried to um, sort of make the font kind of disappear. And basically in like using carabines kind of circle shape thing, I tried to get at various different um, expressions of what uh, denial might look like on a face, like the, uh, and um, that's the person whose truth is being denied. That's it. Hi everyone, um, my name is Mimi. I'm in Queens, New York. Um, this is the comic I drew for today, how to make, how to make dumplings. Uh, the first one you'll see ingredients, the second one mixing the ingredients together, the third one treat it gentle but fill it a lot, fourth one fry it and serve, and then this will be uh, don't forget the sauce. That is it. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, so this is about the things that nobody speaks of. So this is uh, an appointment that I had today. So I'm driving to this to the city. And uh, this is a kind of appointment that happens every three years in a woman's life. And it's a gyne gynecological one. <laughs> so, um, so I'm in the room and she's um, super, she seems super nervous, the nurse practitioner. And all I hear is uh, no stirrups and I'm going, yay. And then, uh, and then I said, uh, she's more nervous than I am. And then she's uh, uh, doing her job and she, oh, it's nice and pink. And oh, sorry, it's kind of cool. And then I start, it's, it almost evolves into a game of Pictionary, the way she's describing things and we're talking. And then I walk out all happy because I've got some free samples of things. And I'm wondering, why don't people talk about this? And then later that night, I'm, I'm saying thank you for uh, modern medicine. And my husband's uh, uh, dreaming about his favorite sports team winning. Hi, thank you. That was nice. I'm, I'm on the same vein. I'm, it's so interesting. And I have a little dilemma because my camera's here and my comic's here. So sorry, I'm just going to look like I'm not connecting. But um, yeah, I, um, I've just been going through a lot of health stuff. So this is like me, young me saying my back hurts. Why don't I love running? Maybe I'm just lazy, I guess. But I'm in a lot of pain and just seeing doctors, doctors, no resolution, heaps of alternative healers, no resolution. And all my inner talk about that, maybe I'm just a bad person, maybe I'm a hypochondriac, but I can do good back arches though. <laughs> and then this year I went to sort out my pelvic floor and, you know, it's so weird being at the pelvic floor physio because she's like got her hand inside you when you're just having a chat. And... Um, she said, no, your pelvic floor is really strong. You have hypermobility. And then I Googled hypermobility. And of course, that's every single pain and uncomfortable pregnancy and every single thing I experience. And so now this is me thinking maybe I'm not lazy and maybe I'm not broken. And I think there's a few other self-talk items that I would put in there as well. It's my first ever comic. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you to the last few folks I shared. I was muted. I just noticed what you said in the chat. So I'm like talking to myself, but um, yeah, thank you all for sharing. Like, uh, it's not easy to share. Hi, can everybody hear me? Uh, yes, this is called um, No Digital Tools for Now. And uh, this is a, is this a four panel cartoon that I, have drawn in the past, and it basically says uh, I used to draw four panel cartoons or comics, but then I stopped. And the characters there are asking why, why did you stop? And I usually draw myself, so that's me with a thinning hairline and with the beard and 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 so forth. And then at the bottom it says I'm not sure why I stopped and 
uh, just a little dog that appears in my cartoons and it says it wasn't because of COVID. And then um, um, then there's a little uh, character saying, you need to work on your lettering. And then um, I say, I guess I was busy doing other things. And then the alter ego says, you were busy being somebody else. And um, so there's a little comments throughout and it's really, this is really like a vehicle and it's going down um, a highway and it says it's a journey. So, um, and this is the first time I share my work this way. Um, and that's it. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, hi. Hi, everyone. I, uh, I am Umi from Japan and it's uh, what, eight? 8 a.m. something like that. I, I just forgot um, forgot about the workshop and I woke up naked. Um, yeah, so I don't usually do do what is it drafting, but I did, and I was just expecting myself to be a little bit productive, more productive than I was. So I drew more than like five or six panels, and then. Um, I juggle with the ideas of my grandmother, who is uh, slightly crazy, but I didn't even reach to meet my grandmother, but it was about my path to meet my grandmother. Like I have a ritual of uh, going to her place reluctantly because she was not a really good person. And uh, uh, so here is the title and it signifies, oh, whoa, shit. Uh, <laughs> Well, it shows uh, dried noodles. And uh, the tell you thing is uh, it sucked the smell of the incense that she burns each day. And she was a uh, religious fanatic. So uh, in the first panel, no, the second panel, like I go take a two cars train and go to her place. The train was so slow, the cat is lying on the rail. And then I got off and it's, it's Japan in the 80s. So, I think I wanted to do more of the scenery and from blocks away, I could smell her incense. So I was just smelling my direction into that. And this is Seun, so that's like blue crowd. That's the name of the cheap ass incense that you can get at the supermarket or deli. So this is a Google view of me and her, um, <laughs> her house. So I was able to smell her from like really blocks away. So that's a part of the thing, thank you. Thank you. That's awesome. I think you're muted. Um, let me see if I can. Uh, here we go. Oh, I'm sorry. There was some noise in the background when I unmuted myself first, and so I muted myself again. Um, I'm just showing this out of uh, peer pressure from my friend Umi, who's been drawing these wonderful diary comics every day for the past couple months. And uh, and it's gotten me back into thinking about sort of visual visual narrative. But this is, uh, can I, let me see if this, this is just sketching. I'm pretty slow at things. Um, I have one panel, there's no sequence, <laughs> one panel comic um, in which I will fill the words later. <laughs> oh, thank you all so much. Thank you. Hi, I'm Janice. I'm here in the California Delta and we have a lot of feral cats out here, cats that have been released. And uh, so I'm drawing about an interaction I had today with one of them. So basically, I was asleep, minding my own business, and there's all this noise coming from outside. The cat banging on the door in the window, making an untold amount of noise. And of course, I go ahead and open the door and I talk, baby talk to the cat, but I guess the cat is too cool for that because he decides he changed his mind. <laughs> it's an old story. 
but you know, feral cats are way cooler than domestic cats. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. <laughs> <Maybe> la <laughs> Hi, I'm, I'm Liz in New York City. I live downtown. And um, this is a panel of, this is my day today. I'm trying to do um, uh, a daily diary. So this is me on my way to the acupuncture clinic. And I'm thinking, I hope you could help me. And she said she could help me with everything that I could ever think of. Um, like um, uh, brain injury and breast cancer and migraines and arthritis and anything I was thinking, she says, oh, I could help you with that. I could help you with that too. I could help you. And then um, I went to, um, to the Ducks by Rockefeller Park. And um, then um, I forgot to draw my mask in these things because <laughs> we're still wearing masks out in public. So I got, a, yeah, anyway. So then I went and I looked at the graphic novel section of the uh, library because they just opened the library again in my neighborhood. So that was my day. Thank you. Thank you. That was awesome. It was really cool to see everyone's comic. Um, I'm always surprised at how people think about comics. And that's the beautiful thing about these workshops is we get to see there's not one way to make a comic and anyone can make a comic. And I don't mean that disrespectfully, but I mean that as comics are really accessible as they're supposed to be. And so that's the beautiful thing about seeing you all share your stories and your comics is it helps other cartoonists and comic artists think about comics differently, hopefully that, oh, I could approach a panel like this, or I can do a word bubble like this, and I could tell this story. And that's kind of what I want to explore in comics more than like, oh, I can draw like that. That's not enough for me because comics is such a beautiful form. I don't want to sit on my soapbox, but I love comics. And I think the accessibility is what makes comics for me and seeing all of y'all's work is, it's really great. Um, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for SAW for putting this together again um, and cultivating such a community. Uh, that's the thing about comics that I don't want to go away is the community aspect. And so a place like this where it brings everyone together to do comics is always brilliant. Um, Thanks for having me. I uh, hope I did okay. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. Um, it was really fun. I was very nervous, I always get nervous, but yeah, thanks for letting me just, you know, share this time with y'all. Thanks, Lawrence. <laughs> I'll see if I can unmute everybody all at once so we can say thank you. Wait, I'll ask all to unmute. So you got one second to just sort of like, yay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So much fun. Thanks. Thank you. You're amazing. <laughs> Good to see everyone. Thanks, Laura. Yeah. Thank you, Saul. Thank you, Lawrence. Thank you, Saul. Thank you, Lawrence. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. I love that. I love this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.